Hey, Facebook friends, Brad Dombrowski here, First National Bank. I'm actually having to do this broadcast today from my car. I had a closing that was timed right around when I do this and didn't want to change the broadcasting time. Um, I'll give it just a minute or so to get started. Hopefully there'll be a couple people that will join us here in a moment. Uh, hopefully if technology allows, I'm gonna have my assistant put a couple posts along the way um, for some of the topics that we're gonna talk about. So, you know, today was really about a lot of my clients, they get pre-approved and, and they don't really know what's a good logical next step. And so what I thought it'd be fun is to just talk about some high level things of what you should do uh, once you're pre-approved or if somebody you wanted to buy a house someday, what's involved, what are the steps? Obviously you've heard pre-approval, but maybe not sure what happens after that. So um, as I said, we'll get started here in just a minute. And um, I'm gonna have my assistant here post a couple things to kind of keep you in the loop as far as what we're talking about. So um, the first thing that I wanna say is that I've been doing this business for almost 17 years now. And I'm asked a very similar question almost every time. And in my opinion, it's not really a question that I should be asked ever. Um, really the question is, what's the most that I could buy? And the reason why I don't think that's a very healthy question to ask is most people will qualify for more than they'll ever want to make on a monthly basis when it comes to a mortgage. And there's a couple reasons why that is. But first off, so that you're aware, the mortgage business underwrites loans based on your gross income. So that's income before taxes come out, before your social security, before uh, your 401k. We're also only looking at the debt that you have on your credit report. So we're not looking at um, you know, your utility bills, your gym bill, your uh, entertainment expenses, anything, you know, health insurance, cell phone bills, any lifestyle expenses that you have are not taken into consideration for getting pre-approved for mortgage. So I'm a big fan of going off a budget, comparing to what your current housing expense is so that you can be somewhere that you're comfortable with you know, the budget moving forward. So again, not recommended to want to know what's the most you can buy because the reality is most folks are going to qualify for more than they'd ever really want to make on a monthly basis. Um, by the way, while we're broadcasting this, if you have any questions about anything or you have any comments you'd like to share, um, please put in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them afterwards. So um, the next thing that I want to talk about is a home buyer's checklist. And um, you know, once you're pre-approved, the next logical step is to search for a home. And there's a variety of ways you can do that. Um, most people these days start online on the internet um, or they go to open houses. And what I'll just give you a, a, a heads up on is the internet world of looking at homes, although very convenient, can be sometimes misleading. Um, I kind of compare it to maybe internet dating where the photos may be a little bit deceiving. So it is highly recommended in my opinion that you work with a realtor um, that can help you go out and look for houses because the reality is uh, a realtor is going to be a professional that's going to know the area know the neighborhoods help you find things um, and here's something that i wasn't aware a lot of clients didn't know but as a buyer um, it costs you very little if anything to use a realtor to buy a house um, any costs that are involved are typically paid for by the listing or by the sellers so there really is no economic benefit to not use a realtor. Um, there's a lot of navigating to go through. And so it is my opinion that um, when you're going to look for houses that, yeah, maybe you look online a little bit, but definitely use a realtor to help you find that. And um, when you're looking at them, there is a home buyer's checklist that hopefully will be shared here below. And if not, I will add the comments afterwards for you to review as you're comparing other homes. Um, so let's talk about you found the dream home and you really don't know what to do, how to make an offer. Again, this is why I recommend a realtor. Um, a realtor is going to be the professional that's going to do their homework and do maybe a comparative market analysis on homes that have sold in the neighborhood to really determine what's the best price to list. Unfortunately, in today's market, um, there could be some sellers that are overpriced. Um, and just because it's listed a certain amount doesn't mean that that's necessarily what it's worth. So again, my opinion, a realtor is going to help do their due diligence to make sure what is a good offer to write. And so, again, using a realtor is going to make that life um, a lot easier. Now, if you found a house and you're concerned that maybe you don't have enough money to buy the house, whether it's for down payment or closing costs, I want to explain a little bit on how that works. So um, a little thing that I say is there's two buckets um, of money that you need to buy a house. Um, the first bucket is your down payment money. And 
The down payment money really works in a variety of ways. You could actually get in with 0% for some loan products, um, as little as 3% or even 3.5% down, depending on the loan product that you're looking for. Um, there's first time home buyer loans where you could get in with literally as little as $1,000 out of pocket. Now that's bucket number one. Um, bucket number two is your closing costs. And um, again, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but the second bucket is covering your closing costs and a seller can, you can negotiate with the seller to pay for some, or in some cases, all of your closing costs. Again, my opinion, this is where a great realtor comes into play. Um, they can negotiate with the sellers to pay for some of those costs, maybe all of those costs if the situation presents itself. Um, it's not uncommon for me to close a loan where literally the client only put in their minimum down payment. So don't be spooked by the down payment and the closing costs. Um, hopefully there's a situation where it could be worked out where if you're limited on funds, there's some first time home buyer products, or you can lean to have the seller pay for some of your costs. So again, utilize a realtor that can help you navigate that world um, or call me and, and we'll explain some extra details on how that works. Now, um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was you moved into your house and a lot of people tend to forget about expenses once you're in the home. Um, you know, as you all know, if you're a homeowner or renter, you have expenses, whether they're utilities or internet or cable or, or electricity and water. And so what I want to let you know, again, a lot of people aren't aware of this. You can actually call any utility company, give them an address, and you could get a 12 month rolling average bill for that house. Um, a lot of my clients like to live on a tight budget, which I'm a fan of. And it's good to know when you found a home that you like to go ahead and contact the utility company and to find out what's the electricity bill on average for the last 12 months, what's the water bill, um, really any utility bill you can get. And I believe literally you just call them and just say, hey, I wanna maybe put an offer on the house and they will give you that information. Obviously, if it's new construction, that's gonna be a little bit challenging, but again, a lot of folks aren't aware of that. So please take advantage of all the information that you can have. Um, looking down below, I'm not seeing any questions yet. If you've joined us late and you have any questions or comments about the pre-approval process or what do you do next, please um, feel free to put comments below and I'll answer away. Other than that, that was really the main thing I wanna talk about. Hopefully there's been some notes added below from my assistant about the advantages of using a realtor, um, also some home buyers checklist. If not, I will add those later today. Um, that is all I had for you. I like to keep these a little bit brief. I will tell you that next month, March 20th, I believe, let me double check that. Um, yes, we are gonna be having a webcast just like this. Um, we're gonna bring in a special guest that's gonna be a, a guest speaker, and we're gonna talk about uh, home staging, the advantages of home staging your home to list your house for sale, or maybe you're in your house and you need some advice on home staging. So I very much appreciate you joining me today. Um, again, you could reach me anytime for pre-approval assistance or really anything mortgage related. Uh, my phone number is 402-602-5362. Uh, my web address is braddombroski.com. I thank you for your time and I hope you have a great day. Bye now.